Hello and welcome to today's Full Plate Living's Cooking with Friends. I'm Amy Hannes. I'm so glad that you have joined us today. Uh, we, as I said, have a special, special friend today with us, Jeff Nina Curtis. And it's Nina. Glad you join us. Um, just a few housekeeping items before I kind of really tell you about how awesome of a Chef Nina is. Just a couple of housekeeping items. Say hello, find the chat, say hello, tell us where you're calling from, uh, where you're joining us from. We so want to uh, be able to answer your questions. So that is the place to ask your questions. Anytime during it, we can kind of pop on and off. We will have a select time at the very end for Q&A. So um, don't think it's gonna get missed. We'll make sure that we answer your questions. Um, another thing, this is the internet. It is the World Wide Web. It is technology. So um, if we have any issues on either side, just give us a moment. We'll try to reconnect and get back on as well as if you have issues, um, you know, try to reconnect, refresh your screen. We have found that the Chrome browser works really well for us, um, but you might try a different browser that you have if you're having issues with visual or audio. Okay. Um, sometimes it can kind of depend on a variety of things of how you're connected or if you're work watching and what they allow. So um, just know if there are any issues, just try to reconnect. Yes, we will have a recording of this to share afterwards if you just have a massive amount of issues in connecting. Uh, so we will have uh, the recording as well as the great recipes that Nina is sharing with us today. Um, so, um, man, let's see, what else have we got housekeeping? I think that's it. So make sure you find the chat, say where you're at, say where you're from. I'm going to read all of Nina's, Nina's bio because she has done some phenomenal things and I just absolutely love her passion for healthy food. So she is the director and executive chef at Adventist Health Roseville campus. And I want to make sure I get this cafe name down right. Is it Vitalize? Vitalize. Vitalize Cafe and Culinary Arts Department. At the helm of this dynamic culinary division, Chef Curtis continues to be recognized as a leader and trailblazer in the plant-based culinary movement, which is awesome. That's what our organization is all about. Um, as a former executive chef at the ranch at Live Oak, Malibu, uh, the acclaimed Seven Day Fitness and Wellness Boot Camp, and the chef, the chief, sorry, nutrition officer for the ranch uh, daily a meal subscription service in Southern California, Nina keeps her finger on the pulse of the wellness and plant based lifestyle trends. Nina has been an avid proponent of a plant based lifestyle for the past twenty years. Nina's food and beverage background over the years includes working with the Marriott Group, Hilton Hotels, Baxter's, Manhattan Beach, the El Caballo, Oakland, Pure Food and Wine in New York, and the Springs Restaurant and Wine Bar in Los Angeles. So you can see why I'm so excited to share all this with you today. But hold on, hold on, wait. Because she presents lectures and demonstrations on health, nutrition, and whole foods all around the world. She has developed wellness training programs, set up kitchen operation, and has worked closely in conjunction with culinary master gardeners to develop seasonal and gorgeous garden-to-table recipes that are essential uh, to having delicious plant-strong culinary experiences. Uh, she has an MBA graduate of a, the Pepperdine University. Um, Chef Curtis was also trained at Living Light Culinary Institute, Trinity School of Natural Health and Natural Gourmet Culinary Institute, and she holds a plant-based nutrition certificate from the Tecon Campbell Center for Nutritional Studies of Cornell. So you can just see how fabulous of a person she is, and we feel so blessed that she has joined us today to actually present an award-winning recipe. Isn't that correct? It is. It is. I give you the um, Haystack with the Healthcare Without Harm organization. They're a global organization and they have a chef contest every year where they focus on hospital healthcare food service to get chefs to put more plants, more fiber on the plate. So it wasn't necessarily an all vegan contest but it was a stretch to put more plants on the plate. So I was like, I've got this. <laughs> We're gonna win, because you don't enter a race not to win. But um, we, we submitted it and uh, we won. So it, it was definitely a blessing. That is fantastic. Well, I am going to leave the screen. I'm gonna hand it over to you to 
tell us more and to show us this. If we have questions that pop in, I might pop back on and ask you if that's okay. Uh, if not, of course, we can um, do some of them at the end too. So I'll be right here. I'll be in the chat. So if you have questions or anything, um, those of you who are attending, just let me know there. All right, Nina, take it away. Thank you, Amy, and good, good day, everyone. Wherever you're calling in from, I'm on the West Coast in California, and I'd like to welcome you into our Vitalize Cafe here at Adventist Health Corporate Offices. So we feed our associates that work at the corporate level. Our hospital system is throughout the West Coast, and we have over 23 hospitals. We operate the Blue Zones, um, project. So that means the Blue Zones was studied over 12 years ago. Dan Buettner at the time worked with National Geographic and they studied the zones around the world where the longest lived people were. So that was Loma Linda, California with Seven Day Adventist. And we have Loma Linda University. There's been a lot of studies done on Seven Day Adventist. And um, Seven Day Adventists have been going since 1836 in um, Battle Creek, Michigan. They had their first sanatoriums that really encompassed uh, vegetarianism, veganism. They didn't call it that really at that time, but it also incorporated many of the things that we know that the Blue Zones incorporates, and that's plant slant, that's eating 80% to your full, that's purpose, that's belief, that's right tribe, that's movement, that's um, just really leaning in to life. And these things that they studied, they were the commonalities that they found in every region. So I said Loma Linda, Okinawa, Japan, Ikaria, um, Greece, Sardinia, Italy, and uh, Nicoya Peninsula, Costa Rica. So we're really excited here. Um, we've been through a pandemic. We've all shared that commonality, but we're standing strong and many of our associates are working remote. We pivoted and started our veg out vitalized um, boxes, which are like a CSA box. So we still work with our farmers to be able to provide local and seasonal and organic produce. So it's so important to support our farmers, our farmers markets. We know that, but we are that. We're a well building certified entity. So we are watching all the allergens. We are watching, you know, how much sugar our associates are drinking while here at work when they come in the cafe. We're not telling anyone what to do, but we know that as a society, we are not getting enough fiber one. We are not getting enough plants and fruits and you know structured water where you're eating high content fruits and vegetables like cucumbers and tomatoes and all the fruits we can think of although peach actually has more juice in it than um, oranges so when it's still contained in that whole plant food you are going to have that hydration longer in the body because of the cell of the plant even versus a glass of water. So when we start, and I think I'm speaking to the choir, if Amy, you told me, right? We already know 75% of what we're looking at on our plate. We want high fiber and fresh and local. And we need to chew these things because there is the fiber and there's insoluble fiber and there's soluble fiber. So you wanna chew till you liquefy your food in the mouth, the amylase enzymes, helps to break down the carbohydrates so that the stomach with its hydrochloric acid can better break down the proteins and the good fats. But here at our cafe, we are 100% plant-based. Last past Sunday, time is moving fast. Past Sunday, we were at the Sacramento Tower Bridge dinner and it didn't happen in 19, excuse me, 2020, but it did happen. So we had over 830 people on this bridge and i was invited to be an appetizer chef and a pod chef so i made cucumber cups and made beetroot hummus and we got our produce from 24 carat farms in placerville california which is very close to us so i made this beetroot hummus and then i had seaweed caviar 
yes, seaweed caviar. And my chef friends that are on the other side, as I call it, they couldn't believe it tastes so good and so similar to roe. Um, I did a sour cream with a base of tofu, and then I had microgreens, and they gobbled it up, let me tell you. The other thing I'm excited about, I'm very excited to be here with Amy. Thank you to the Ardmore Institute and Full Plate Living for having me. It is really a blessing to me, so I, can, I hope I share my light and my passion with you. That um, Monday, I'm in a contest for the third year. It's food literacy. And they work to get children between um, grade one to six more fresh vegetables because these children are in less served areas. We won last year with collard greens. We won the year before People's Choice with cauliflower. This year, they've given me mushrooms. So I have a team of people I'm leading. I can't tell you what I'm doing yet on Monday. We'll have to share, Amy, the recording with you, but we're going for the gusto. And it is a fundraiser and it helps make sure these kids get these vegetables, not just get them, they're being taught. There's a cooking school being built now. So they're being taught, they're getting their hands dirty because we know when kids are involved, they're more accepting to these foods we're talking about. So if we can get started, I think that's enough about what I'm doing because I am a passionate being and um, God has been good to me. I'm gonna share with you our Adventist Health Vitalize Haystack. And this is a heritage dish as I call it because Seventh Day Adventists know this haystack well. It's a recipe that may be served after church or during a potluck. So it's really one of those comfort foods that, you know, you just kind of put out this buffet of what everybody likes. It's on a base of Fritos or tortilla chips and the sea is parted, let me tell you, by those that want their Fritos or those that want their tortilla chips. When I entered it in the contest, Healthcare Without Harm, I helped it up a little bit. So I made a base of black rice. So I use black rice instead of the chips and I use the chips as the garnish. I love black rice. Maybe you want to put it on brown rice, long grain, or quinoa, or farro. I mean, there's so many things that you can set your base with, but I love black rice because one, the fiber, one, it's a protein rich, more protein concentrated than maybe your brown or white rice. And it's rich in anthocyanins because of the black color. So you know our foods that are red, blue, purple, black, are higher concentrations of anthocyanins that are a part of antioxidants that have been shown in studies to slow down cancer cell activity, to help reverse, to help put it at bay. So it's one of my favorite rices. It used to be called, and on some labels, it's still called forbidden rice because there was a time where it was forbidden for common people, I'll say like me, to even be able to eat it. So it's delicious, it's nutty in flavor, and that is the base I started with. Then the next ingredient, and I know you're gonna have the recipe, but I really wanna say when you look at a recipe, I most often, even as a chef that creates from scratch, we're a scratch kitchen, we're a no waste kitchen, I always like to try the recipe they, we have the Blue Zones cookbook that's 100 recipes to live to 100, if that's your choice. That's what they study. Why are these people living 100 and longer in these five zones? But the next one would be the beans or legumes. So again, black beans, you could do red beans, you could do pinto beans, but we soak our legumes overnight so that we can release the phytic acid. It's also supporting um, the legumes to be more digestible because when you start, a, I know I experienced this, when you start a plant-based diet and you've got all this fiber and all this goodness, it is really trying to clean us out. So if we're not chewing well, and if we're not soaking our legumes so they're more digestible and soaking our nuts, it can be harder on the body. These are very concentrated foods. 
And then if I wanted, I would take it to sprouting where I would get a tail that's going to increase even more so its nutrient value. So sprout studies have been done. One in particular I found showed that our sprouts have about 40% more nutrient value than say a sprout of kale would be 40% more nutrient dense than the actual full blown kale. Kind of makes sense, right? So we've got our black beans. Then in your recipe, you see I did, because we are all plant-based, I did a walnut. And if you don't, if you don't have a tolerance for nuts, you can um, just do the lentils or, and you could put even some sunflower seeds, but I simply roasted these nuts because when you roast foods, especially your higher plant-based content food, you're gonna bring up the umami out of these foods, out of your nuts, out of your say beets, like I did for the hummus on Sunday, any of your root vegetables, any of the foods in the plant-based world have umami, but when you roast them, when you grill them, more even than steaming, you're gonna bring that flavor up. And so often when people are trying to transfer over or eat more of these foods, that umami is found in cheese and meats and um, yogurts and such, and miso and soy. Um, so that is what you might feel like you're missing if you're only eating steamed vegetables or raw vegetables. Amy said that I attended the Living Light Culinary Institute. That was an all raw vegan culinary school. We didn't have ovens, we had dehydrators in our kitchen. So we didn't cook or prepare anything over 118 degrees so that all the enzymes were left intact and our enzymes are the worker bees that do so much to help the body digest, absorb, and utilize the nutrients we're taking in. So I then just boiled my um, lentils and then I pulse them in the food processor and I come up with, you have the recipe with this mixture that really looks like a ground beef. I've put the um, garlic powder, as you see, the onion powder, the uh, smoked paprika, a little bit of chipotle. Watch the spice if you don't like it too spicy. I like it kind of hot, but not to the point you can't enjoy it. It has a little bit of sea salt in it and a little cumin, as you see in the recipe. So those are my three bases, the rice, the beans, and the little walnut meat. You could just do lentil as the meat and still spice it. This is a Mexican kind of leaning cuisine. Um, some of us know it as a taco salad, but I'm gonna talk about a haystack today. So what you find is that you have the flavors that we're going for. So when I'm making Italian food, we know those flavors, those herbs, those spices. And then on top of that, it's really what you like. So in the recipe I've offered to you, we have a pico de gallo that has tomatoes, red onions, jalapeno, um, I didn't put cilantro in here, although I put it on the recipe. So I usually hold it for last and add it because so many people are intolerant to um, cilantro. And there are just some people that cilantro takes like soap to them when they eat it. So we have that. And then I like to do, especially in season, it's the summertime. Our corn is sweet corn with bell pepper, a little salt and pepper to taste, maybe even a bit of lime juice that I also put in the pico de gallo. We have our um, tortilla. These are our Frito chips. They're organic, but instead of using this as the base, which we would serve in the cafe, then with the beans and then with the lentil meat, I chose to use it as a garnish. So now people, since I entered the contest, can choose if they want the black rice or the chips or them sprinkled on the side, especially if you're watching the calorie count on your Plate. So what we're going to do, I also gave you a recipe for our Chipotle aioli. That's in a base of follow your heart. I have no affiliation with the company. I just like their product as a mayonnaise for plant-based. And then we take dry Chipotles, reconstitute them, blend them. If you want to lessen the spice, whether it's with your pico de gallo, if you're using jalapenos or your Chipotle, take the seeds out. Take the seeds out and that will curb some of the spice. We make our own jalapenos with um, pickle them with carrots. I use again, no affiliation to this company. I just like it because it's not a nut base and I'm watching the nuts in our cafe. It's a oil, coconut oil base, bio-like. 
and they have a cheddar, a jack, and then this mixture. And then some scallions, our sour cream I already talked about. Again, a tofu base versus the nuts, but I can make a cashew um, so sour cream. So I'm gonna build our plate if everybody's hungry. Now the challenge is me trying to squeeze this plate through the screen here so you can have lunch because it's about that time. Well, let's start building. So I'm gonna start with my rice and I'm just gonna take a scoop. So this is about a half cup of black rice. And I like to, even when you're making food at home, we eat with our eyes first. So plate it, that's very important for us in the restaurants or the cafe, plate it as if you were at a restaurant and you wanted to serve yourself a dish that your eyes were going to have you start salivating first, and then you want to eat it even more. I've got my black beans about the same amount, depends on the calories you're taking in, your size, how athletic you are, um, you decide that. And then we're going to add our meat, lentil walnut meat mixture again. This is wonderful also on a taco, just lettuce and not the beans or rice at a different time. I like to repurpose things in the cafe with regards to, oh, how many things if we make up this batch, because we're making up you know, larger batches in the kitchen than what I would make at home for myself as a single person. So I'm always utilizing just for efficiency to be a no waste kitchen, always figuring out how we recycle, how we repurpose, not that we take it after you know it's fresh, but we can put it on different things that really work with flavor balancing. And I'm gonna put that right on top and then I'm going to add, and if you were in the Vitalized Cafe, we would ask you the toppings that you want. So we're going to put a little cheese on this. And when you're getting it, it's pretty piping hot, so the cheese will start to melt. Some people tell us just where they want the cheese between the rice and beans over the lentil meat. And we work to deliver. And then we're going to take our romaine lettuce and go for it here because this is water right and all that structured water we've been talking about and we're going to build that up because while it's nutritious you can have a lot of this and then from there i think i'll go with my pico de gallo it's so easy to have these things already prepared in your kitchen i don't know about you but i love pico de gallo and tortilla chips or and tossed on my salad. I love in the summertime, I'm gonna have my sweet corn because it's like candy with a little bit of bell pepper. Whether you use red or yellow to get all the fetal nutrients, your vitamins, your minerals here, we have a full plate, a rainbow dish. So we don't have to break up how much protein we're getting. You've got protein, more correctly, amino acids in all plants at varying volumes, but when you eat a full diet, food um, from breakfast, lunch, or dinner, you are getting all of the things that you need. And we can get very specific depending on what your specific needs are. We're not all the same, I understand that. Then I'm gonna take a little bit of my sour cream and just dollop that on. I like it hot, so I'm really gonna go for my chipotle aioli. And then if you like it, it's by choice. We're going to put, we always put it on the side for our associates, the jalapenos, because they're a little sweet and then eat with it. And then I will finish off with some black olives. If you like black olives, this is really a recipe you can take a look at, identify the things you like and add that to your offering. If you were going to do this for a Sunday brunch or a family um meal after church and then you can lay things out and everybody could really plate it the way they like and then i'll just take some of my chips as i said instead of it being on the base because we like a crunch we like flavor we like um the taste when you get all those things involved so you have sweet here you have salty here you have sour here you have pungent here and you have umami and when you have that in a dish, typically the experience is, wow, 
that really tasted good. So in culinary school, we spend a lot of time understanding how those different flavors come together. I've studied Ayurvedic eating in my culinary training at Natural Gourmet and traditional Chinese medicine. So then we really talk about food as medicine. But here is what I would like to serve you, our award-winning haystack here at the Vitalized Cafe. I am trying to figure out how I put it in a container that I could ship it all over the world. Um, maybe the bases and then you just have to fill the tops with the fresh fruits, but I, uh, fresh vegetables, but you have the recipe. So Amy, I'm here for you. Thank you everyone. Enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> man technology was that good oh my goodness yes that looks absolutely amazing i love all the mixtures of different things and so many things just really ring true to um especially if people aren't used to cooking you know it's kind of i love how recipes are guides they're just a guide to to if you don't like something like i'm not an olive lover but my husband is so it's having it there for him but i usually omit them for myself but i might add you know, carrots, shredded carrots to it. So it's kind of figuring all those things out. What do you like best? Add more of that. If you don't like something, omit it. Don't just start the whole recipe out. Just uh, modify the exactly. And I always tell people when they say, well, how can I transition? I'm like, give me a list of the foods you like. Yes. I'll deconstruct that, whether it's lasagna or your mother or your grandmother, even more their favorite dish. And once you see, you can do it. And I did that when I first joined at Venice Health. One of my colleagues said, oh, my mother used to make us these treats, but it had butter and all kinds of things. And she just rattled it off to me and it was a Friday, but I remembered the recipes. I went straight to Sprouts here. I got all the ingredients that would fit into the plant-based spectrum. I made it, I took it to work for her and she immediately took a picture of it texted it to her sister and said, don't tell mom this actually tastes better. <laughs> don't ever tell mom that. No, no. It was so nice to do that. It's just the way I work, right? I'm a chef. Right. Right? Yes. The ingredients, right. I'm going to go figure it out. I don't even need the guide per se, but I'm professionally trained. I better be able to do yes. something for all that um, <laughs> financial <laughs> debt I incurred. But it was just so nice to see her face light up when she bit it. Yeah. And then for her to further text her sister and say, don't tell mom, this is better. You That's know? a good one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we all have those recipes or those memories of different foods um, that are like that. And to me, I'm always like, how can I up the health a little bit? Kind of like you're talking earlier. And how can we just up the health on some of these that may not be as healthy, but how can we how can we do that especially fiber foods like you've done here yeah incredible a, um, a couple different things have come in let's see let go to some of the questions we have lots of good uh, uh, questions and comments do you have you written any books i have not i have not yet not yet yet on it and you know when you're in a kitchen a lot of hours and then your recipe developing. And as I said, when we started, I have all these recipes in my head. So a true, a true artist as a chef will, it's almost like I taste notes and layers of things. So I'm in that moment and I do it and then you make revisions of it, but that's just an excuse for me why I don't have a book. I am looking at doing some things in um, NFTs with recipes, but not yet, not yet. I'll leave it there. Very good. Well, I'll, I'll happily link to some different things. I know that you, you've done uh, some different videos and things like that. So we'll, like, we'll share some of those with our members so that they can um, see more of kind of what you've done. Um, the next question is, do you soak beans until they sprout for even more nutrition? It depends on what I'm doing. For the, the, the work that we do in the cafe, I just want to soak them, rinse them, um, and then cook them for just more digestibility. When I'm eating a raw diet, which I was raw vegan for three years, I'm definitely sprouting because I'm not cooking them that way. I like to sprout legumes, especially when I'm using them in salads and more raw in their more natural form, or I'll make a chickpea hummus 
that is not cooked, but I sprout the chickpeas so that it's more digestible and then the nutrient content is even up. But I, I want to make it palatable because you just, yeah, you need to sprout those before you're going to eat them like that. Very good. Well, thank you for that question, Tracy. Let's see. GV says, thanks for not including cilantro. For some of us, it really does taste like so. <laughs> I was thinking of you because I like cilantro, but if you don't like it, it tastes like someone trying to wash your mouth out. With <laughs> So I'm considering you. Yes, I am. <laughs> Let's see. Paige says, I love hearing Nina talk um, a lot. A lock of or L O C A V O R E. Food security and supporting local farmers is so important. Yes. Yes. And it's it really important, especially at this time. We've always been local, seasonal, and organic here based on our well building standard certification. But in, in this time, and, and just knowing where our food comes from, because I don't think we realize on the daily in most of our grocery stores, food can travel over 1300 miles. And when I was at the ranch, we had a two acre farm and there was nothing like going out on our farm, picking those tomatoes off the vine and then putting them in the salad for the guests. You just don't get that. So the minute it's plucked, you know, apples stay in forage for months. They're a fall winter food. We eat them all year round, but they're held in storage. So when you work directly with the farmers or your farmer stands or your farmer market, you really get to know what the people are doing. Who is, you know, it's the seed and the soil. And that's what we really want to know about. So yes, very important. Absolutely. You know, I don't live in California where you have some phenomenal farms there. I live more in Southern Oklahoma and it's a hard to grow here. But it really is amazing how many local farmers there are just around here. So if you're looking for um, one in your area, start asking around calls, maybe even local extension, farm extensions. Um, there are so many different different farmers markets that are available. I just really suggest you search it because there is a local farmer that you absolutely can help support. And the nutrition is just amazing. So um, love that point. Uh, someone said awesome starting when they're young talking about the kids challenge you're doing so that is fun you'll have to let us know how that goes and good luck on that uh, endeavor ahead. critics tell you when you the first year i competed with the crispy kung pao that we bake we don't have any deep fryers here little you know first graders i'm not eating that i don't take i don't eat milk it's no milk it's plants but um they strengthened me they made my skin thicker Yes, absolutely. All right, let's see. We have some more here. I wanted to, I'm not, I'm wanting to try the meat substitute. This is second time I've seen something like this. I think this is quite different than a meat substitute too, just because it is the lentils of walnuts being um, kind of the, the whole food using where a lot of times in meat substitutes, it's, um, it's quite more lengthy process and, or more of a processed food, really. Yeah, for sure. I, uh, we do a black bean, black rice with jackfruit burger. That's one of our top me menu items. So we really work um, scratch. There is a company that I like their sausage because I just don't want to and don't have the labor force to make sausage, which I could also plant-based. But there is a difference in those processed foods on the market. You should really be able to understand the ingredients when you read them. And so if it helps someone to transition, okay, a little bit, like I would also advocate, you know, some, uh, blue zones, maybe the area they only ate meat five times a month. So I would still encourage people with the art of the meat substitutes to eat less of it and still get that 75% fiber and whole plants on the plate and not lean on that. The same with anything. I mean, you can be a junk food vegan right. or a junk food plant-based eating. So we're really here advocating for whole plant foods right. from scratch. And then use those other things as condiments and less to accent as you need. Yeah, that's so true. I think having that mind shift change, and it takes time. It does. Um, I grew up, it was, what are you having for dinner? And it was the meat. 
Yeah. Granted, we have a lot of veggies around it too, but what you're having kind of was the main thing. So it's a little bit different thinking about planning a meal and, and having having that as a condiment. I love I love that saying. But Amy, you um, also know that after a couple of weeks of eating whole plant based, our our taste comes back to life because the sugars and salts that are hidden in so much of the processed foods really um, numb our taste buds. So after a while of eating the food, let's say a, a full month, you really start to appreciate the real taste of a tomato, the real taste of leafy greens, even the taste and the umami of beans and legumes. So give yourself that chance. Don't worry if you fall off the wagon, as some say, just get back up as my grandma would say. It's not a race if you're not on the clock. But I do love saying I work to feed. My passion is feeding people food to live for, not to die for. Yeah, so true, so true. Susan says, thank you. I love the explanation of the benefits. Amy, are you there? So it looks like we're reconnecting. Okay. Hi, Paul. How are you? I have lunch for you. <laughs> it looks delicious. You'll have to take it through this way, though. I, I'm going to have to work on that project, how to, how to make the internet work that fast. I would love for you to figure it out sooner than later. <laughs> so I'm scrolling through. I'm trying to... Uh, See if I can figure out exactly where Amy was in the questions. Um, We're talking about um, everything. Was about tomatoes. Um, we about uh, meat substitutes, and we were. I was talking about flavor and letting your taste buds come back to life. Yeah, that looks like. I love the. Here. It might be Amy back right now. There we are. I'd almost found where you were, Amy. <laughs> Sorry, I got kicked off. <laughs> our world, the way of our world. I'm glad it didn't kick me off, but thank you for taking that one for the team, Amy. Well, there she she's going off again. I'm going to ask you uh, uh, this next Has question. Got me now? Can you see me and hear me? Yes. Excellent. <laughs> Thanks for hopping on, Paul. This is exactly why I have a backup plan, so I appreciate doing that. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. Tracy says, "Do you have a great re you have any great resources that hold a candle to full plate living to share with us?" Well, I don't know about that. I think there's some phenomenal resources out there that all are kind of talking the same message. But do you have a favorite? You know, there's so many out there, and Amy, I'd love to share some with you, and then you can make that available to the group if you'd like, because when you ask me that question, I get like a roadblock, and all my favorites just land right here, and I can't even get the word out. But there's some good books that I always like to ask what people like to eat, because so many of the books out today are by cuisine, or are you trying to learn techniques? or are you where are you at in the spectrum in your journey so i really like to instead of putting out a book that fits all sure. i really like to better understand so i will take an offer up to you like five books at different levels with some different cuisine so people have more options i'm an option person i like sure. options there's more ways than one to cook a delicious dish that's so true. That's so true. I actually would love to share that with everyone. Um, I think one you mentioned was just the Blue Zones cookbook. I think they do a great job of sharing, especially a variety of different culture uh, yes. recipes. So if you're feeling a little bit adventurous, but yet some of the items are just so simple um, yes. and they really do focus on uh, adding a lot of um, high fiber foods. So it's um, a great, and I know a lot of times, um, even some of my favorite um, cookbooks are different vegan or vegetarian ones because most of the time, as you know, as Nina said, it could still be a junk food vegan diet or, or a vegetarian diet. I'm not vegan or vegetarian myself, but I eat a predominant, you know, plant-based diet and have found some great staple recipes that uh, that I go to. So thank you for sharing those. I will share those with everyone else. And I don't always um, 
just purchase or look at vegan vegetarian books, often not, because I am really about deconstructing things. So I have a lot of chef colleagues that have books out. I'll one support them because I purchase them. And then for everything on the plate that's not plant, I deconstruct it and then I share it with them. And they're like, don't write a cookbook. And I'm like, well, I'll do at some point. But so the library is very inclusive and diverse because I'm looking for ideas and then I bring in my own creative spin on it. That's great. That is very good. Um, let's see, Ella says, um, if you use canned beans, do you soak them? No, the canned beans have been cooked. The canned beans have already been cooked. But what I do watch for is low sodium or no sodium. And when I give and when, and I have used them, I rinse them. I rinse them. Usually canned legumes are not soaked before they're cooked. You know, they're talking, they, we're working in massive uh, factories where these things are being produced, but I will rinse them. When you talk about say chickpeas, well, all legumes have aquafaba, bean water, but aquafaba has become the trend in the past couple of years. And chickpea is uh, probably the one you hear about most because it's more neutral in flavor and color where I've got aquafaba with black beans, whether you cook them yourselves or you get them from a can, not as readily from frozen food, right? Yeah. So I will use aquafaba in replacement of eggs. So like two tablespoons of aquafaba will replace two eggs called for in your baking good. I'll make a um, quiche with the aquafaba and one fourth cup of um, chickpea flour replaces one medium egg with the added water. So yes, the, the um, canned foods, vegetables, I just, again, watch the no sodium, low sodium, and then I rinse them before I prepare them because you're basically heating them, right? But they already cooked. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, we have some more questions. Let's see. Is everyone hungry? Did it whet your appetite? Or did you try the recipe? I'd really love to know the feedback if you would share it with Amy so we can talk about it. And you know, it never ends when we finish here. It only begins because all of a sudden we have these questions that we didn't think of because you're trying to listen to me. So but I should see me earlier if there are any questions, if you would just send them to her, she'll send them to me and I will get an answer back because it never ends. Once we stretch an idea in the mind, the mind never goes back to its original shape. So I hope you'll see this as a continued uh, group session that we could have love that love that and if anyone wants to um email us email me um email me amy amy at fullplateliving.org you can always um, send emails or respond to any of the emails that um, we send out most of them are sent out by me so you can reply to any of them and i'll get those as well we we'll love any questions that come afterwards um do have some more questions here do you have a gluten-free bread recipe I do. All of our baked goods are gluten-free here in the cafe and nut-free and vegan. So again, Amy, I'll send you a basic bread. I worked in a bakery, Erin um, McKenna, and all of our goods, it was in LA on Larchmont, and she was in New York also because she was celiac, um, so intolerant to gluten. So I was there for a while and we made donuts and muffins and rye bread and, and all. So I, I could share a recipe like that with you. That was great. Uh, do you work with microgreens? Yes, yes. We had arugula microgreens on the appetizer that I did with the beetroot hummus in the cucumber cups. And it was arugula because of the pe pepper free taste. But when I was at the ranch, I had a whole greenhouse. So we seeded our things before they went into the ground and we had beautiful microgreens. I love microgreens. If you can grow them in your kitchen with your herbs, that's another way just to add to what you're doing with your local farmers. But microgreens, I, I love them. Just be mindful, you know, they, they go fast. So smell them, you'll know, um, but also know the source you're getting them from. And I would recommend they be organic at all times. Yeah. 
Someone says, I may have missed it earlier, but where is your restaurant? I live in Southern California and would love to come visit someday. <laughs> I'm in Northern California, Sacramento area. We're housed in at Venice Health corporate offices, the Vitalize Cafe. And currently we've only been since our inception of opening open to our associates. We have about on a you know full on day, not COVID induced. We have 1,400 associates in the building. We have a 5,000 square foot cafe, but we are, once things settle down, really looking at opening to the public or at least being able to serve you at curbside or delivery. So thank you for that. Very good. Um, someone says, I, there's been several, someone I think even said like a, a recipe book on substitutes. <laughs> Yeah. So it says my daughter, uh, my daughter-in-law can't eat alums, and so many vegan vegetarian recipes rely on those so much. Are there any substitutes you have found? So she can't eat um, chives, any of the alliums. Is that what I heard you say? Yes. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Hmm. There are there are different things. I wouldn't say per se substitutes, and I always want to know what it is she's putting them on or in so that I can recommend if you'd send an email and give some examples, then I make sure what I'm saying out there will fit the profile sure. of the dish that she's making. Very so good. the answer is yes, but we want to be more specific. Yeah, no, I understand that. Uh, let's see, someone says, um, I had made homemade refried beans and brown rice right uh, for lunch right before this, so I'm kind of like I was here for the food just the tiniest bit. <laughs> That's great. That's right. uh, what was the ingredient after the beans? After the beans, I did the lentil walnut meat. The meat substitute. That was just a mixture of meat. You don't have to soak lentils. Um, they're just already, unless I want to sprout them, right? There's a difference. And then when I cook the lentils, I just cook them not like I would be making a doll. I don't want them soft. I want them to what we call chew. So when you bite down, there's still a texture. It's still like you have to bite down. We call that chew. So I want it that way because I want that texture of, for the moment, that ground beef stuff we talk about. Yeah. And then walnuts, I roasted them to even bring out more of the umami flavor. And so those were just the whole walnuts that are toasted, you can maybe say. And then I put both separately in a food processor. So I did the walnuts and just pulsed it. I didn't put it on go because you'll get a pate. That's for another recipe. So I just pulsed till I got that texture and like the size of your ground beef. I did the same for the lentils, then I mixed those together, and then you see the spices that I put in that's in the recipe, including the smoked paprika, cumin, onion powder, garlic powder, um, and I think the chipotle. Yeah. And a little bit of rice bran oil, you see that on your recipe. And the rice bran oil, I like to cook with in the cafe. I'm not a fan of canola oil, but that's just my research that I've done. I don't want to cook with expeller press olive oil. That's a finishing oil because it doesn't have a high cooking heat, but rice bran oil does, and it's a neutral flavor, not like coconut that has a high heat, but you're going to taste the coconut. And it also is high into oils, vitamin E. Very good. All right, Nina, I think that's looks like most of the questions. Oh, someone had one about jalapeno peppers and the pico de gallo. Um, how did you use them? Did you have them? I think um, if you did, you, you could have used absolutely use them in the pico de gallo and you can make them as hot or as mild, depending on if you ECB main. But you also had some pickled ones, I think was the other. So I minced the jalapeno and the pico de gallo. I took out the seeds just for what I know our associates like right and me i don't take my seeds out at home and then for our pico de ga um, our jalapeno and our carrots that we we grind here i just slice them and then we um grind them in our pickling seasons with our pickling seasons water and raw apple cider vinegar and then when we have a case of jalapenos oftentimes so we're in a, in a no waste kitchen We'll take the beans, we'll cut them in half, we'll remove the seeds, we'll dehydrate them, pulling out all the moisture so we're preserving them. And then we'll take a portion of that and we'll pulverize it so we have a jalapeno powder. Very good. Amazing. That's all right. 
All right. See any other questions? Plate no. well. Please take a look at your handout. It has all of the ingredients that were used in the haystack, the recipes to make all of the different um, layers of this. Um, so please make sure you got the download. If you did, if you can't seem to get the download very well, I will be sharing it in your member, member email. Um, we will have it on the page with a recording so that you can download it and share it. And Nina, thank you so very much for sharing your passion, your love of these fiber foods along with us. It's so nice to um, find and meet and share that passion uh, with the world. And we're so glad we could be able to share that with our members today. So thank you so much for being here today. I hope you all have a fantastic day. Thank you, Amy and friends. I really enjoyed it. And I just say eat food to live for and not to die for. So very true. We'll see you later. Take care. Bye. Bye.